Hi everybody. It seems like it's been this side of forever since we talked and had a chance to get back together. Uh, just a whole lot has happened. Spring is a really busy time. People are in the fields. Farmers are in the fields trying to throw people out of their fields. <laughs> There's just everybody's running every which way. And as a result of that, a lot of uh, important questions have come in from you folks. Uh, some misgivings or misthoughts are being misled down certain roads. So I thought what we'd do is look at beyond concavities and have two sessions here. One would be beyond concavities one and the other one will be two, where we can review some things, help you out, maybe uh, bring more success to your walking. So uh, lean back and enjoy and get ready for today's great adventure. Let's start with everything you've walked past in the field. And it happens when we do that. And what I've done, I've brought things in from this year when I was out walking. And some of these were in the footprints of other people that went ahead of me. And some of these I had to do a second take. Some of them I didn't even know until I got home and washed them up. Let's see what I brought in. We had talked about fire cracked rocks before. And this is a clean break, so I don't know necessarily, I do know, but when you get a clean break, it's usually a plow break. But in this case, the patina here is the same here. So this is a prehistoric break. And it was laying like this. Uh, why did I pick it up? And this is what I want you to think about when we go through my box of rocks, is would I have picked those up? And I am picked it up because I suspected fire cracked. It was on a really good multi-component site. And as a matter of fact, I just turn over every fire cracked rock. Well, let me flip it over. And I didn't see this until I got home. And what you have is a very much interrupted surface right here, what you would find on a hammerstone. In East Central Ohio, this color of rock uh, happens to be one that they favored. The mineral content was right. Prehistoric people use this for a hammerstone. Part of the, uh, the context of my site. So here we go. This guy was laying on a multi-component site and it was laying this way. Actually, it was laying like this, it's just as clean as could be. Well, it's kind of big, but you know what? This is a fire break, so I'll roll him over. And I started to roll my, wait a minute. This should not be this color. This has red, it should be a much lighter uh, tan color. So eh, it looks like it's been fired, fired. So I'm looking at him, looking at him and whoa, looky here pitted stone, not a cup stone. A cup stone would be reamed and, and spotless and clean. Pit stones have many strikes inside each concavity. Uh, part of the archaeological record on the site to help you out. Would I have picked these up? When this was in a field, it was laying like this. That's what I saw. It was uh, spot clean, but it was level with the ground. And I'm thinking, okay, the four things I want you to remember are what I repeat to myself is color, shape, size, texture. Color is the right color for hammerstones in my area. Size is hand size. Texture, everything looks good here. Uh, shape, it's circular. Bingo, let's dig him out and see what we got. Well, I dug him out. He was dirty and I was feeling around. And I thought, man, I feel something with my fingers. Went home, washed him up, and here we go. Hammerstone, and look how this thing has been hammered, hammered, and altered the, the uh, perimeter pretty much all the way around the rock. Also, I don't know if the camera can pick up this oxidation, this reddish orange color. So we will continue. Also, on uh, in particular, this is another color uh, that pops up quite a bit for hammerstones. Again, same field, I'm walking, I'm looking at it. Well, it's round, it's hand size, it's the right color, I'm gonna pop him out. So I popped him out and sure enough, right there, the surface has been altered with peck, 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 peck. Checking him out, right here, altered with peck, peck, peck. That's probably a prehistoric break right there. Peck, 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 peck. A little bit of pecking right there, hammerstone. Now these tell you a lot about the site. This is not an overnight site. This is not a tiny little campsite. These were people that were actually spending some time, maybe a week, a couple weeks in an area, coming and going, or maybe it's a prep camp. In this county, 
most people were coming to get flint, dig from all the fire pits, fire pits, all the uh, the ridge top <laughs> flint pits that are just laced throughout this county. Uh, another rock, not so much the color, but again, it was round, and I thought it's round, and besides that, I wasn't finding any arrowheads, so I had a lot of time to po uh, poke rocks out of the ground. Popped them out, round, 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 and I got to feeling it. Remember I said your fingers are your second set of eyes. Baby bottom smooth, except in the middle, flip him over, and in the middle. And these are just the very beginnings of a concavity. At this point, it's acting like a pitted stone. I don't know where it's gonna go from there. These are what I felt with my fingers when it was dirty. After I washed them up, I saw lots of pounding and pecks on this. So I have a pitted stone with some pecking on them. A little bit of peck here, uh, a little more, and then a lot right there. Would you have picked these up if you had been walking with me or if you were on one of your sites? More than likely, if you're finding very, very little flint, especially the retouch of the thinning flakes, you may not have these hammers. Another one, round. The Notice the colors. Now there seems to be some uniformity in the colors. Color, shape, size, hand size, and texture. Texture, this is not sandstone. This is metamorphic igneous type rock. Wash them off, look at the ends of this rock. Hammer, 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 hammer flip them over the other side just a tiny bit. So you've got to look at the entire perimeter of these before you make your decision to keep it or to start your wife's rock garden. Um, the other thing is, this is kind of a greenish color here, right? I'm going to flip him. Greenish color. And look at that. This was the part that was exposed to the heat. Not necessarily in, but right beside the fire pit. They or maybe working around the fire pit, the fire got bigger, little. Maybe their kids had to fire it up during the night while they were sleeping, and uh, the fire went over it. But either way, this has been heated, this hasn't. This is a great piece right here. Looking in the ground, this is what I saw. This is a type of glacial carried in banded slate. This looked like a plow break to me. And if you look at it, you can see that whitish color right here. Same thing on a piece of flint run your fractured areas, uh, your hinge fractures. If it's real whitish like that, it's either freshly plow or disc, or it's a fake artifact. <laughs> if you find it in the field, it better be real. So I looked at this, and eh, I thought, whatever. But it was a slow day, and I went ahead and popped them out of the ground. I got to looking at this. I'm like, wait a minute. This is rounded. This is aged. It's got some patina in here. This is a hammer stone. This is a plow strike right here, but this is hammer right here. And I, look at this. Look at the other end of this. Just pounded to pieces. Not the typical hammer stone for this part of Ohio. Made out of glacial flint. This is glacial, but this is banded slate. We just don't find those very often. This is a typically typical piece of uh, uh, igneous rock granite that uh, the glaciers brought in. If you look at I'm putting it beside this artifact right here. Can you see the color differential between the two? The, uh, the white in here is actually kind of orangey toward red. But over here on this one, it's still pretty whitish. And the reason for that is heat. Most rocks have iron in them, and when it's heated, it starts to turn that iron orange or that iron red. So what I saw in the field was this color. And I thought, okay, well, this has been in or around a fire pit. Let's pop him out and take a look. And I looked at him, I washed him, and I thought, oh, boy, just a rock. But my second set of eyes said, oh, I got a concavity right here. And it's right there. And I got to looking again, and look at that. Can you see how they pounded one side off? Pounded. This is some. Dr this is hard pounding. This is not the kind of pecking you do when you're just trying to reduce the size of something. This is the kind of thing you do when when <laughs> someone really makes you mad. <laughs> it's just trying to crack some rocks and do some serious damage. Isn't this great? I love this stuff, and I'm so glad you're with me. And you know what? After you walk for enough years, 
you're going to learn that there will be things that just don't look right. They don't seem right. And a lot of you guys and ladies have said that. You've picked things up. You've sent some pictures of things that just aren't typically typical in the field. Uh, for me, do they belong on these multicultural sites or do they belong on a Hopewell site? This piece was laying like this. It was on a heavily, heavily used multi-component site. Just village after village after village. I'm looking at it and I said, well, it's, it's green, it's round. Um, I'm going to pop him out. It looks like it's been oxidized. This is actually a green slate, a light green color, but it's been oxidized and I turned it. And even with my fingers, I could feel that this is this has really been intentionally smooth. I rolled him over and I'm like, whoa, it's been split in half. And the other half has been polished out and when I look at the edges, you can see that the edges have been picked and chipped and ground and smoothed all the way around. Um, what is it? You know what? I'm happy to say I don't know. <laughs> it takes a big person to say I don't know. But that's the truth. Point is, I recognized it didn't belong. I know it's an artifact. I just don't know what it is yet. Um, I've heard different people say that cones can be in a million different sizes and shapes. They can be very rounded to very pointed. And I've had several people say this could possibly be a cone. Don't know. But with a really good uh, hand lens, really examining this thing, I'm able to actually see the polishing that went on in here. When I was field walking, I looked down. That's all I saw. I had to be willing to take that extra time, use my mason trowel, pop it out of the ground. That's what I want you guys to do, is just flip things over. Get used to popping things over. That should be as much a part of your walk as your tennis shoes are that you wear in the field. Uh, these two came out of a field, and it's a field that I don't normally walk. It was a field that was very powdery, and it had not been uh, rained on yet. So I've learned from experience that you need a good hard, at least two inches of rain on a powdery field to get it to where you can actually begin to see things. Uh, I went in this field with a friend and we were walking and I initially picked this up and I picked it up because of this. This was something that I hadn't really seen before. I knew it looked like a big hunk of flint and I got to looking at this and I'm like, well, I'm gonna keep it only because of this. When I got home and washed it up, I'm trying to figure out what I have. It's not cortex, it's not outer portion of the flint. and closer examination said, looky here, we have some kind of an internal fracture. If I follow the fracture, it goes through, it goes through, all the way around, all the way around, and out right here. So this is just a, a flaw in the rock. Uh, it could have popped from freezing and thawing, which I'm guessing it did. And I was about to pitch it, but I always take my fingers and I my second set of eyes, unless you have glasses, then you have four eyes. But I use my second set of eyes, and I'm feeling it, and I'm like, oh boy. Concave, concave, lots of retouch. Um, some people call these spoke shavers, uh, not so much, as this is just a large spall flake, and, uh, and it was turned into a type of uh, heavy duty scraping tool. This was a lot of fun. This was just laying wide open. Uh, saw it um, 10, 12 feet away. And I picked it up and I'm looking at it right away. It's, ah, oh, it's broken. Maybe it's just a, a preform, close to final stage preform. Nah, it's too fat, can't be final stage preform. Well, I got to looking at this break and I'm like, oh, geez, that ripple is the type of ripple that I see with a certain strike. And this ripple normally creates what we call a, an overshot and an overshot is when the flake the energy actually comes down and rolls over like this and it breaks well this went to this point and I'm like well then that means the impact had to come from the side from this area now I'm looking at it and I'm beginning to see something if you look real hard you'll notice the color from here on up all this is very different and this is beyond a preform. 
This not only has secondary flaking, it not only has retouch, but it has serious pressure retouch. And let me hold this so you can look at how they work this to a, a specific edge right here. One person suggested perhaps it was a broken hand axe. That's a possibility. But we're always looking for clues. We're looking for evidence. Things that say, hey, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. Well, this one, I think, might have been a wedge. And they were splitting wood. It was stuck in the wood. And just like you do when you use a wedge and you're uh, splitting firewood, you got to get that wedge out. You take your axe and you hit it on the side to loosen it up a little bit. I think this wedge was stuck in whatever they're trying to split. They hit it this way and they got this, this fracture that created this type of overshot right here. So right there, and I could actually see the impact point. Most of the impact is gone, but this is kind of a run over of the impact where they hit it, broke it in half. So my question for you, uh, we're gonna wrap this up here in a second. My question for you is, would you have picked these up? And Years ago, I don't even know how many I walked past, but I don't want you to walk past things. I want you to deepen, give some depth to your field walking and your collections. Some of these, are, like I said, are hammers, various other artifacts. Some of them we don't even know what they are, but they're all a part of the archeological record that defines your site, that may lean into a particular culture on a multicultural site. So um, <laughs> from Concavities and Beyond, part one, uh, thanks for coming back and hanging out with us. We're gonna come back real shortly with Concavities two, and I'm gonna tackle some of the questions that have come in maybe in the last month or so. So uh, don't get up from your chair yet. <laughs> we'll see you in a minute. Thanks again, bye.